in this lecture we will be talking about ion sources which is the most important part of the any accelerator so this uh, information will be useful to all types of accelerators now point which i want to discuss is that since you have seen that in the case of uh, uh, tandem accelerator and the peloton accelerator negative ions are injected therefore you should know about what is negative ion and how how they are generated so proton accelerators use uh, charge uh, which is plus electron accelerators use charge which is minus few. heavy ions will depend on uh, how is the uh, how, what is the charge state now at this moment i would like to point out that the in the case of negative ion uh, the only singly negative ions are uh, uh, have been then it has been a uh, uh, lot of experiments have been done to see if uh, doubly negative ions or multiple negative ions can be formed and uh, it has not been successful otherwise suppose uh, and doubly negative ions are also formed then uh, it would be possible to accelerate uh, uh, ions to twice the energy in, in the first column itself therefore you can get higher energies but unfortunately it has not been possible and therefore the positive ions it is uh, easy to remove suppose you uh, take oxygen 16 which has eight electrons remove all the eight electrons then it will be oxygen 8 plus so q becomes eight times so energy in the case of uh, tandem or the peloton will be 1 plus 8 means nine times of the voltage now what is this negative ions how how you get this negative ions you can see that atom for example we can get additional electron then the, for example if you take uh, h h then it has only one electron and that will go to 1s1 that's the orbital orbital and uh, suppose you have he uh, helium then in ground state neutral then it will be Uh, another electron will go into the s orbital and it will become 1s2 and s can have only two electrons so it will have this while if you add one electron to hydrogen then that extra electron can still sit in the uh, s s orbital and uh, it can contain it can easily accommodate one more so it will be 1s2 which is a stable configuration while in the case of h minus if uh, try you try to add one electron then one s2 is full so it will go to the next unfortunately uh, this h minus is not possible in ground state however there is a meta stable state where the the, uh, the negative ion no helium is possible and it is formed for a short period for a it about uh, 360 microsecond in the case of uh, for example oxygen if it is a neutral atom then the configuration will be 1s2 2s2 and 2 uh, p4 it has eight electrons so uh, p can have still uh, uh, two more electrons therefore o minus is possible without any problem so if an O minus if you take, then it will have two plus five. It's still one more electron, but uh, unfortunately, binding energy uh, does not allow this to happen. So helium, uh, uh, helium uh, is an inert gas and has two electrons in the orbit. Configuration is this: H minus should be one uh, S to two S in ground state, but it is not found. Uh, binding energy calculation show that. Uh, however simulations as well as experiments have shown that there is a state uh, is called 1s 2s 2p uh, that means this uh, electrons they get distributed to 1 1 in L, 1s 2s 2p and that state is called 4p 5 and half meta stable state which has a lifetime of 359 microsecond so uh, binding energy of 77 milli electron volts so it's very loosely bound 
However, in the case of uh, ground state, uh, the binding energy is very, very small. So it is not possible to. So the, uh, here I want to emphasize that the lifetime of this uh, meta-stable state is about 359 microseconds. And that has been measured very accurately. And uh, earlier by mistake I told uh, by 70 microseconds. 70 microsecond is for some other uh, state. Here for this meta stable state, it is 359 plus minus 0.7. So very accurate measurements have been done. However, this time uh, microsecond is good enough to accelerate the point. So in the in the case of uh, in the case of uh, pelotons or even tandem, this uh, uh, helium is uh, is uh, accelerated further. And uh, so, uh, first first column section, the HE minus will be accelerated. There, uh, in the uh, terminal, uh, in the stripper, it is possible to remove both the electrons, which was not possible in the case of Van de Graaff, and because of power limitation. Here, it is possible. So, you get three times energy rather than the two times. So, that's the advantage of peloton as well as tandem. Now this has uh, this has tremendous amount of uh, this negative ion formation thing in peloton has tremendous amount of uh, advantages because uh, uh, if, uh, there are many many atoms which do not form negative ions and that gives uh, tremendous amount of advantages. All the negative uh, in ground state, all the uh, inert gases do not form negative because their outermost orbits are completely full so the uh, and if you want to form the negative ion that extra electron which you are putting in has to go to a next orbital which is uh, has a binding energy machine so all inert gases do not form none of the none of the inert gases form uh, negative ions uh, for example inert gases are helium neon argon xenon krypton so on. And in, ad in addition to this inert gases, another atom, this is nitrogen 14, also does not form negative ions. And this is a bonus for uh, scientific communities because uh, this allows us to do a very accurate measurements as far as accelerator mass spectrometry is concerned, where we measure the uh, let's say for carbon-14 to carbon-12 ratio and since nitrogen is not forming negative ions so it does not interfere with the uh, carbon-14 dating and we are able to good, uh, do good measurements on this and not only that uh, there uh, since these uh, inert gases don't form negative ions so that is again an advantage for various uh, kind of uh, measurements where carbon-14 negative and uh, aluminium-26 or uh, iron-55 or iodine-129 uh, they are they are used in this uh, because there is no interference from these uh, isobars which are shown below that carbon nitrogen-14 magnesium-26 um, Magnesium 55 or xenon 129. So, uh, because there is no interference from isobars, they, that is why we are able to get much higher um, accuracy in the measurements. The carbon 14 formed in the upper atmosphere through the reaction between cosmic rays, neutrons, and nitrogen 14. So, this is the reaction. And this, uh, uh, nitro, this carbon dioxide with carbon-14 is taken by the plants as long as they are alive. And uh, so there will be a certain amount of carbon-14 there. And uh, uh, as soon as the uh, plant dies, this intake of uh, this carbon-14 stops. So by measuring the, uh, by measuring the carbon-14 by carbon-12 ratios, you can easily uh, find out what is the age of that uh, plant or uh, living being. Similarly, by measuring the ratio of uh, iodine 129 to 127, 
you can also measure whether uh, in that area any uh, nuclear activity has taken place, uh, whether it could be nuclear leak leakage in the reactor or uh, or some device testing has been done in that area. So by measuring this, this uh, iodine-129, you can measure that. So this whole process where the, where we measure this is called the accelerator mass spectrometry and the tandem and pelotons are used. In fact, uh, these tandem and pe pelotons are known as uh, ultra-sensitive mass spectrometers. And uh, this is a field which is very widely used. And now dedicated uh, peloton, small energy accelerators, peloton accelerators are built. They are in thousands in number, which are used for AMS work and very accurate measurements are possible. Accelerators uh, nowadays, uh, uh, even 500 kV to 1 MV uh, peloton accelerators are also built uh, explicitly for AMS purposes and uh, they are very effectively used for this purpose. This is, as I said, that this is a very important component of, uh, in fact, 80% uh, uh, of downtime in any accelerator is because of uh, malfunctioning of fine source. Therefore, it has to be uh, properly designed, built and tested before it is installed in the accelerator. Now, uh, in earlier lectures, we have uh, discussed different kind of uh, ion sources and uh, in fact not only in basic research but also in the applied research these uh, things are very important for example negative ion sources are very useful in the field of uh, accelerator mass spectrometry where uh, the uh, uh, identification of various elements can be done with the almost 10 power minus 15 sensitivity and therefore uh, uh, these negative ions, some elements form negative ions, other don't form and that is the, the characteristic of the property used in the case of tandem and uh, well, peloton kind of accelerators and uh, uh, sensitivity of uh, detection of uh, many elements. Uh, in accelerator mass spectrometry depends on that and since we uh, have to inject uh, negative ions in the case of tandem and peloton accelerators therefore they are called ultra sensitive mass spectrometers because now uh, coming back to uh, ion sources different techniques are used for different ions and uh, this is the field, I think, the, which has been studied and uh, research R&D has been done to the maximum level on the ion sources. So there are very large number of uh, ion sources are uh, have been built and the, their performance has been improved considerably over the period of time. Now we talked about that there are main three kinds of uh, ion sources. One is uh, electrons. And they are uh, uh, not ions, they are electrons and positive ions and negative ions. Positive ions are used uh, in the Van de Graaff or, uh, or anywhere, uh, including the Cockroach Walton. But negative ions are used in the case of uh, tandems and uh, peloton accelerators. And that is why these, uh, uh, there is an advantage in using these. Uh, and this I have discussed earlier. Then there is another kind of ion source, is called neutral beams. And these neutral beams are uh, very useful and they are required for system like tokamak. Recently, in the uh, recent past, another kind of uh, beams are required and they are called uh, PVAR, antiprotons or antiparticles. Uh, so these beams are available uh, for nuclear reaction studies or particle physics studies and they are available at a uh, few places. For example, uh, in Tabatron as at Fermilab USA, 
वन टी वी एंटी प्रोटोन बीम एंटी प्रोटोन इज पी बार दैट मीन्स पी बार इट इज डिफाइंड लाइक दिस सो इट इज पी पी बार यू कैन कॉल इट दीज आर द रिएक्शंस और द इंट्रैक्शंस विच पीपल इज स्टडी एंड दैट इज अवेलेबल एट एवट्रोन वेयर द वन टी वी बाई वन टी वी बीम्स आर स्टडी रिएक्शन एंड देर इज अनदर फैसिलिटी एंड वेयर अगेन द एंटी प्रोटोन बीम्स आर अवेलेबल फॉर दिस फैसिलिटी इट सेल्फ इज कॉल्ड फैसिलिटी फॉर एंटी प्रोटोन एंड आयन रिसर्च दैट इज कॉल्ड फेयर एट जी एस आई जर्मनी वेयर दीज बीम्स विल बी अवेलेबल नाउ कमिंग टू डिटेल्स ऑफ आयन सोर्सेस द इजिएस्ट वन एंड मोस्ट इज स्टडीड वन is uh, electron sources and that is a very simple source and uh, there are two techniques which are used one is thermionic emission that means you have a filament here you can see filament and if you pass the current then it will get uh, heated temperature will go up and the electrons will come out and uh, then you can you can uh, uh focus them or you can guide them another way uh, of uh, doing is that you have a uh, like a sharp sharp point here and apply a voltage then the as the as the gradient is uh, is pro- is a inversely proportional to the tip radius so since it is almost like zero so it will be very high so field ionization will take place around this a lot of electrons will be coming out and of course different kind of crystals and different kind of uh, uh, things are used for uh, uh, depending upon their properties and then the, you can get lot of electrons so electron beams in even in amperes have been have been possible and they have been achieved so either by increasing the temperature of this or by field ionization field emission these electron beams are the, and they are as i said that uh, they are the most uh, uh, studied sources among all the others and the reason being that uh, electrons are used everywhere whether it is medical or is uh, or it is uh, the uh, national security or uh, food irradiation and and therefore they they are uh, studied well now let me just uh, give a overview of ion sources uh, and their how they are produced and what kind of uh, uh, ion sources are available mainly in addition to this uh, electrons electron beams we have positive ion sources as i mentioned for example in the case of uh, in the case of van de graaff accelerator or cockcroft walton they are positive ion be- ions are used we can also use negative ions there if the terminal is uh, raised to the n- negative voltage or you can have uh, peloton and uh, tandem kind of things where negative ions are injected so what are the various techniques and what kind of ion sources uh, are uh, very famous uh, for these two things. see for example you can see a list of various types of ions so i am not going to discuss all of them but i would like to discuss few of them which are most popular for example there is one called uh, uh, dio plasmatron which can produce both positive as well as negative ions see you can see there that is listed at both the sides so dio plasmatron is one which can create which can uh, give you both positive and negative ions and then the, there is another very important uh, uh, ion source which is called isnic ion source which is uh, uh, is a must for any peloton accelerator and it is a source of negative ions using cesium sputtering and then then there is another ion source which is called uh, alpha tross alpha tross which is again a source of negative ions and uh, particularly developed for uh, peloton accelerators 
and this is also pretty famous. Uh, there are many other kind of things. There are the target ion sources for uh, uh, radioactive ion sources production and things like that. So there are different uh, techniques have been developed and lot of R&D has been done to develop this kind of ion sources. For example, charge exchange also is another. In fact, this is alpha truss ion source also is nothing but this charge exchange type. 